I have to do it again. Right. But so hopefully it's, I'm hoping it's sign language right. or that it's right. other right. than it. The, the other thing I would throw out too is that for a lot of students kind of in this profile, mm -hmm. you know, a community college is a really great choice as a stepping stone to a four-year school. Mm -hmm. And community colleges can be um, easier to get into in that sense, mm -hmm. like they're not going to be so harsh on those requirements. And you can get a great test of, and, and you're a really great taste of what college would be like. You can get some really good core classes out of the way that can be just as, and some of them, some community colleges are a little bit more academic rigorous than others, mm -hmm. but you can still get those core requirements out of the way. And if you're staying local in Minnesota, they have something called the Minnesota Transfer Curriculum that almost all the Minnesota schools Right. recognize that you say okay as long as you take these courses they're going to transfer to any other four-year school here mm -hmm. um, or if that's a stumbling point take it in the summer right and, and, right and really but that, that might be a stepping stone and just take the one class and just take the one okay right yeah <coughs> okay. I mean there's lots of different options and ways to, to get around it to sometimes get around. yeah okay. yeah what is the tuition for GPS is it, is it it's it depends on which piece and part of the program. It um, can go anywhere from three thousand to twelve thousand, depending on twelve thousand being a full full academic support. full academic. You're taking you know full load. Two, yeah, two to three classes and getting academic support. And getting academic support. You're taking that. You're taking those classes somewhere else. Right. Yes. So right. there is still the tuition cost. Right. Okay. Right. And then. Okay. And we offer some financial. And we do have well. financial yeah. okay. um, assistance. And I'll, I'll throw out a little plug too. If, if any of you are really interested in GPS, we're housed in the building. You can come and we're happy to give you a little tour of our facility anytime. We're housed in the far end of Groves Academy, so you can kind of see a little bit more about us. But. Is this the only site for Groves Academy? Currently. Yeah. We're looking, we're looking to take our program <laughs> off campus else, yeah. and, and really expand our business of, and some of the career yeah, pieces and program. stuff like that. We're kind of we're running out of space, and we've yeah. added on and added on to it about <laughs> as much as we can here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How um, kind of the students are kind of both in the spectrum of learning disabled math and adjective? And so we're in a situation where we can potentially look at some pretty highly rated colleges. And I'm getting some really different opinions as to whether you should apply to these colleges and let them know about your IEP and all your accommodations up front or Thank whether you should apply without telling them any of this, and then once you're in the job and accepted, uh, then that is present them with all that. With a lot of those higher end schools, it's really competitive. And, and I don't know if they, it's, do they, do they mark that against you? I think if he does get in, I would find a, probably a life coach or somebody that can keep him on track, if just to keep him organized, if that's something that he struggles with. I don't know what the answer to that. I, I would throw out too, it, it may kind of depend on where his grades are right now and what his transcript looks like and, and how well-rounded that is. Um, for example, if you know that, you know, gosh, he's going to test really high on his ACT, SAT, whatever, he's going to have these scores to get in. But, you know, some of his grades have been a little rocky. Then that may be something you do want to share as a way to explain you know what, this is why these grades have been where they're at, or this is what it is. Or even if they're looking, sometimes they're looking for more of that well-rounded profile, and, and you know your child's you know, transcript and, and application is gonna be stacked up with someone else who's in 450 different activities, <laughs> then that may be a way of saying too, to say, you know what, I know that um, maybe, maybe he doesn't have all these other activities, but the reason why is because you know, he has this other thing going on, and, and his focus was on school, and that's what we were able to do. So if that's the situation, then maybe you want to say something. But if you feel, I mean, if it, so it really might depend on his transcripts. Mm -hmm. And with um, the ADHD, you see a lot of the A's and F's. Right. Yeah. Right, where you'll see that real up and down. <laughs> and, and so in that, in that case, then, then it might be something that you do want to say something, so as a way to kind of explain it, because if they don't know that, then they're just going to say, oh, here's someone A's and F's, we definitely don't want that. So do you write like but a separate I think that's part. I think that's. I think that's part of that college right. essay. And this right. is who I am. So what if the school doesn't have, they don't have an yeah. essay? Yeah. Here, here's the other thing, too. If this is a place where you really want to be, when you send off that application, whether there's an essay or not, I would definitely follow up with a college visit and get in front of the college counselor. 
because the best thing to sell your child is your child. Yeah. And, and that may be where it may require some coaching and prompting and some practice beforehand, especially if you know your child isn't, isn't is going to struggle with that part of it. But it, if, if that's something you can coach and practice with your child to do, to have them do a follow-up visit and put a real face to that application, that could hold some more weight with an admissions counselor who then might be willing to say, yeah, you know what, I, you know, and, and then the other thing too, gosh, look at how committed this kid is. He came and this set up a meeting even when he wasn't required to. Even though we didn't have an interview process, they required it. They're, they, they, they asked for it because they really want to be in here. So that could, that might be the tipping point as well. That it tips because when you do apply, there's, some just right, it's just blind. Right, and well, some of them are just even online. You just click boxes, and yes, that's it. Exactly, but then they don't know the real story behind the child. Right. right. And therefore, they're getting penalized in some regards. Right. For their disabilities. Right. Because they don't know that child, and that was my son's question. Well, how do they know about me if they're not right. asking anything right. about me? Right. I would. Which, I'd know, call it missions. Okay. And that's where, like, if you say, if that's the school where you really want to go, then get down there to admissions. Okay. Make appointments. Okay. Do college visits. Make follow-up appointments if you need to. Right. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's not so far that it's a 10-hour drive every time. Or yeah. a flip. I was just going to add, because we have a similar circumstance and at um, the high school where my son goes to, the counselor says, does it transcript and she said at these highly selected schools they will call her and say what's up with this kid right so I think it's almost better to let them that's my opinion from what she said to me she right. said it's almost better to let them know yeah so because otherwise it's going to be such they're going to see it right. right they're going to say it. there's something uh -huh. there's and they're going to call and they're going to try and figure it out and they're going to see some kind of a yeah I had the same right. conversation with a with a with a parent last week that had extended time on their ACTs and just blew it out of the water but he's got really really slow processing and and he is and he wants to go into engineering and he is and mom's scared to death that he's just going to get slaughtered because things are going to be moving so fast but on paper he it looks, looks great he looks fantastic yeah go ahead Do you want really new at this, but do any schools ever encourage, like, gosh, gosh, we want more dyslexic kids to show success? Is it, like, is there any quote on this book? I mean, there's, there's, there's programs out there. I right. mean, some colleges have programs. Like Augsburg has a class program set up, so they're not that they're, they're marketing college, to that, but that they, they're but looking at that. Does that mean they go to the regular classes yes. and then somebody's oh, yeah. just there? Right. It's similar. Uh, right. kind of it's similar out. to us. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, There's the University one in of Arizona has University the SALT program. Illinois. Right. So some There's colleges have specific programs set up within to say you're still going to be in all the regular college classes, but we're going to provide a little bit more support, support. than just, you know, just I mean, what a normal disability would service. Would be. Right. So how do you find those? That's my question. We, we Without knowing the specific questions, how do you find the schools? That would, is there a place where you, a resource where you can go and find the schools? I mean, you can you can Google, uh, you know, colleges for learning disabilities, and then as you go onto their websites, I would look for the, the program programs. within the program. Right. It's called the class program. Oshkosh's Project Success, the Salt program. Mary Pat, what's the Illinois one? Bren College. Bren yeah. College in Illinois. Um, There's one in Florida too. Um, starts with a B too. I that's think. really good. Beacon. Beacon, I think, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that is. Yeah. Yeah. And some some schools might say they're specifically set up for students with learning disabilities. I mean, you have Landmark out on the East Coast, <coughs> and they're they're specific to we only serve students with a learning disability or whatever. So um, I would make sure you look but, with the program within the program, right. and it, if it has a separate kind of disability service page. <laughs> right, right, where they can explain what they what do. They explain what and the that's program a starting is. point. Yeah. And you did ask earlier what parents need, and that is key. If someone that is a clearinghouse, kind of, like you, you know, some of the limited information you provided on specific colleges today, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, 
eat that. <laughs> I mean, really, it, you know, the more of that. I mean, we we know that we know we know more because we've been in this field. But well. and we've but, been working with the colleges for the last three years, right. so we know, and we also yeah. see the academic rigor of well, each college, and we missing. also I mean, yes, no, it's exactly that. It's specifically where they are. Where are these? Are these yeah. resources that you have listed here? Can you comment on are any yeah. one of those a particularly good list, comprehensive list of programs nationwide, or a comprehensive description of program? Do you know?